Welcome back to my Roadie Completion Guide for Bloodborne. This is episode nine. And the first thing that we want to do is run over and talk to the bath messengers. We need to buy a bloodstone chunk. This will cost you exactly 20 insight, which if you've been following the guide, you should have exactly 20 insight. You can tell by looking in the top right hand side of the screen. Now, if you don't have 20 insight, feel free to go ahead and use one of your madman's knowledge. You should have plenty in your inventory. I had that planned as well to make sure you guys had a fail safe in case you missed something in the guide. So just make sure that you have 20 insight buy that bloodstone chunk. Then we're going to come over here and fortify our hunter axe to plus eight. After that, you can pay a visit to the other bath messengers. I want you to sell all your extra attire just to get you some extra blood echoes. And then we're going to fast travel back over to the cathedral ward. So if you remember in the previous episode, we picked up the upper cathedral key that will allow us to enter a locked door in this area. Once we do, we're going to pick up another trophy called the choir on the way. We're going to run into another treasure chest. I want you guys to open up that treasure chest and pick up the radiant sword hunter badge. So the trophy should pop any second now. There it is, perfect, the choir. Now we have a bridge coming up and there's two enemies that's gonna be crossing the bridge. The game wants you to fight both of these enemies on the bridge, but I do not want you guys to do that. Notice the enemy on the left has a staff, the enemy on the right has a staff and a lamp, okay? Notice the projectile coming up. See the projectile, very dangerous. You do not wanna get hit by that attack. The good thing about standing right here is that you can block that projectile. So what you can do is extend the ax, charge up the R2 and kill the enemies from here. After you kill both of these enemies, light the next lamp and set up a safety save. So there is a rune up here on the right that I want you guys to pick up. It's called the Great Lake Rune. It helps us with damage. We're going to need that once we get to the Chalice Dungeon. After you pick up this item, run back to the lamp and return to the Hunter's Dream. So 
So the first thing that we need to do is pay a visit to the memory altar. Now I'm going to be equipping the air, Great Lake, and Moon runes. I would encourage you guys to equip Great Lake, Moon, and the I rune. Now the reason why my setup is different from yours is because I'm not picking up items that enemies drop, so the I rune really doesn't benefit me at all, but it will for you guys. Uh, now I know I told you in an earlier episode that if you wanted to pick up blood vials, you could go to Central Yarnum and farm that route, and that's still true. But if you guys want to throw on the I rune and play the game out naturally, you can pick up blood vials along the way. Now when it comes to your blood gems, equip the following, okay? In your first slot, you want to have the Tempering Blood Gemstone 2. In your second slot, Tempering Damp Blood Gem 5. In your third slot, Nourishing Blood Gemstone 2. So before we level up, stop by the Bath Messengers and sell all your extra blood gems. And then level up at the Antique Doll, we're going to take our Strength to plus 38. Once we're done with that, we're going to fast travel back over to the Upper Cathedral Ward. So we have a small run that we need to make. But there's only one enemy that we have to kill. The rest of the enemies we're gonna skip. We're trying to make it to a ladder. As soon as we climb the ladder, I want you guys to set up another safety save. So the reason why I had you set up that safety save is because the next part is really tricky, okay? There's two enemies. One enemy will drop the orphanage key. It's not the enemy that's to my right. It's not the enemy there. It's the enemy that's to my left, which I don't even think you can see at this point. I went for the backstab and then I was going to go for the visceral attack, which is how it's played out every time I've practiced this. The problem was the other enemy caught up to me. So all this is me improvising, okay? Notice that I get hit with this crazy attack. It does a lot of damage. I don't have any insight to give up, so I'm not worried about that. But look at all the damage I took from that one attack, okay? So here's your fallback strategy. If the enemies start attacking you, fall back to this door, open it up, and then you guys will get some breathing room. Now the goal is to hide at this point. You want both of these enemies to lose you and start walking the other way, turn their back to you. That will allow you to run up there and get some cheap shots in and kill them. You don't want to try to fight these enemies head on. It's a 2v1 and they can freeze you just like that, okay? Remember, anytime they freeze you when you take some damage, you want to go ahead and heal because if they freeze you twice and they do that special attack where they suck that stuff out of your brain or whatever, it can kill you guys, okay? So you have to be careful. Make sure you're always healed up here. Notice I'm just behind the column waiting, trying to get these enemies to lose me. See how they lost us? See how they're walking away? That's exactly what you want. Now you can run up there, get some cheap shots. If they start being aggressive again, you run back behind the column, right? You want to keep doing that until you're able to kill both of them and pick up the orphanage key. After you have the orphanage key, run back to the previous area. You'll see the statue. Just walk up to it, press X. You'll pick up the make contact gesture. We need that for later. We're going to be using that gesture to pick up another moon rune, which will give you guys some more blood echoes when you kill these enemies. Now we're going to backtrack through this area. There's two items that we need to pick up, the Cosmic Eye Watcher Badge and the Ritual Blood 5. We're going to be picking up three of those. 
After you pick up the Ritual Blood 5, go ahead and make it to the next big room. That's going to be a boss fight, but I don't want you guys to trigger the boss fight. Just get into the room, set up a safety save, and we're going to be taking out that boss at the beginning of the next episode. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. I'll see you right back here in the next one. Be good.